Welcome to Dr. Amazon Podcast, the emergency support channel for FBA private label sellers. We invite top Amazon experts to share the most efficient tips and tricks for your businesses. We are trying to deliver only accurate, credible, and relevant information. My name is Vitaly Fizhniak and I am the CGO of Profit Vale. And let's get started. Nowadays, we have a lot of experience with the Amazon sellers and regarding the products that they would like to launch, to start, to select. And today we will go inside this topic. Today we would like to understand how to do it correctly, how to correctly to work with a factory and manufacture process. Today we have a special guest for that, the director of, director of business development at Noviland, Franz Boa. Nice to meet you, Franz. Nice to meet you as well, Vitaly. I, uh, I see you everywhere. I actually was just watching your, your latest uh, podcast on, on branding. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. Because I think that it's one of the main, the, the main uh, things that could help the Amazon sellers to do the right steps on 2021st. And uh, let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Could you please tell us more about uh, the main things that Amazon sellers should be focusing right now when they would like to launch a new product or for example to start the Amazon businesses and when we go to the product uh, to the process when we choose the product yeah when we would like to uh, order a sample from the factory how to choose it how to do it because as I understand it the education it could be one of the main things but let's go deeper let's uh, let's make the main points that we should understand here yeah, so the uh, the main thing I think every seller should really take away is uh, preparedness, right? And and it's hard to be prepared for a product that you may be, if you're not an engineer or if you've never had any product development experience in the past or have been a buyer or a merchandiser for a different company. Um, so it's very hard for a lot of sellers to sort of start out that way and, and taking it from sort of that engineering approach uh, that is necessary. Um, and so when I say preparedness, it's, uh, you know, just as you said, you know, once you have a product that you really would like to launch, you've done all the proper research, you understand the PPC a bit more, you understand the competition out there, the keywords, uh, everything that needs to go into to your listing, the photography that needs to be done. Um, it's understanding, okay, now what is my project scope? And what I mean by that is uh, understanding your product through and through, understanding all the materials, all the the dimensions, any certifications they may need. So uh, let's take a plastic product. So it has to be BPA free because it's going to, uh, I don't know, be used as a utensil for any reason. Mm -hmm. Um, It's understanding also the packaging. Uh, just one step further, it's it's one more move that not enough sellers really uh, emphasize early on. Uh, but it is important to think about uh, for the main reason being uh, you want to try to catch all of this in one swoop instead of developing your product little by little by little. Mm-hmm. And then three months later, you're like, oh, crap, I forgot about the packaging. Now I have to take these volumes into account. Uh, you know, I'm sourcing this this nice mug. How am I going to package this in, into a set? Uh, is it going to have extended, you know, uh, expanded polystyrene, which is just styrofoam? Yeah. Is it going to be bubble wrapped? Am I going to have a design on it? Um, these are important aspects to think of up front because that can play into your margins. It could play into your shipping costs. Uh, it can, you know, determine if that's an oversized item or an odd shaped item mm-hmm. for Amazon, right? Uh, so preparedness is number one. And uh, those are just the product and packaging. Lastly, I really want to talk about uh, is uh, target pricing and budgets. Mm-hmm. I think those are two very important things to uh, to sort of realize when you start your sourcing journey. So it's getting a better feel for, you know, I have no more than 5,000 US dollars that I can spend on this product to, to start sourcing. And that includes shipping. Now, you might realistically have a budget of six, 7,000, but you don't want to go over 5,000 mm-hmm. unless you get a steal, unless you get a great factory under your belt. Um, but when you know your budget, uh, you're a lot more comfortable with negotiations mm-hmm. uh, with factories. And when you understand your target pricing, you know what's realistic and what's not. So, mm-hmm. hey, I need to buy this product for $2 and the packaging has to be sort of the, this type and style mm-hmm. and I can't spend more than $5,000. Now, when you're talking to a factory, you don't have to tell them exactly how much um, you know, you're looking to get this product for. Mm-hmm. But if they say, oh, I could do this for 
$3. Now you can go back and say, okay, well maybe I can negotiate volumes a little bit higher, stay within my budget, and let's try to get that down to maybe 250, mm -hmm. right? And that way you have the right margins. So uh, I think preparedness in these three factors, so the financial aspect, the product specification aspect, and the packaging uh, specification aspect, I think those are three major components when it comes to, to sourcing from China. Got it. So uh, in the case of that, we have like three main components as a preparedness, the finance and negotiations, yeah, then that, that you will have next when you will understand all the things. And uh how to do correctly the preparedness because I guess it's like the uh, it's around like 80 80 percent of your time you will spend on that I mean just to understand what exactly you would like to have uh, according to the preparedness you will uh, check the products that you would like to work with and uh, what, what exactly products you would like to get started yeah uh, according to that so maybe maybe you have some main recommendations yeah uh, that uh, people could use when they start this uh, step? Yeah, so I, I think a great way, and I've seen a lot of successful sellers do this, um, and I've mentioned it to them, and they started doing it, just works a lot better with expansion, mm -hmm. uh, is creating a need and a wish list. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's something I don't see very often. It's, it's something I'm trying to push on more sellers, uh, but that's going back to all those specifications and those customizations and the budget and the target pricing. It's what exactly do you need in this product? Okay, I need this to have a certain gloss or a certain finishing. I don't necessarily need it to have, you know, a handle that's 10 centimeters or has this exact design. Mm -hmm. It could have, you know, anywhere between five and 10 and uh, it could be in different designs or styles, uh, but I wish that it has these certain aspects. So that's something that you can look forward to in the future. You know, mm -hmm. after you validated that this is a great product, um, another thing for that is understanding the, the target pricing. Again, uh, I need this product to be no more than $3 FOB. Otherwise, just doesn't cut it. I'm not going to have the right margins. Uh, I wish it gets to $2, right? So I wish that this product could be $2. And how am I going to achieve that? Uh, you can only really achieve it by developing a relationship with the factories. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in that relationship, you have a lot more transparency into that long-term pricing. So, okay, I'm starting with 500 to 1,000 units now. Perfectly fine, a lot of sellers wanna test the market, makes sense. Uh, but if this product goes well, I want to place an order of let's say 2,000 or 3,000. Uh, the factory might say, hey, that's not enough. Uh, you know, Try to find a new way to, uh, mm -hmm. to really get that pricing down, maybe removing some features to it, maybe shrinking down the packaging, maybe not doing a full custom print on the packaging uh, and just doing a sticker on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but working with your factory, that's how you'll get to the, to the wants, to the wishes, mm -hmm. right? So start off with $3, perfectly fine. Just want to test the market. I'm just going to break even. Yeah. I understand my margins aren't too high, but I wish it'll be to $2. Hey, you know, factory XYZ, how can we get this to happen? How, how many do I have to order? What features do I have to remove? Uh, you know, can I order a complimentary product to it? And you could bring down this pricing. So now you have a margin between two different products. There's so many different ways, but that has to be done uh, through development of the relationship. Got it. So one of the main points that we should be focusing on that uh, is when we start working with the factory, uh, we should absolutely understand what uh, our needs, our needs regarding the products, our needs regarding the packaging, and just to get all this understanding like uh, you know, on the page. So uh, uh, how to do it, how to do it correctly? I mean, how to build this? Uh, I guess one of the most difficult relationships between the factory. Yeah, how to choose the right factory because uh, we have a lot of them and we have a lot of different uh, factories and uh, like suppliers that could provide us with uh, the products like good or bad quality. How to get on the right way here? Yeah, and that's a great question. That's a million dollar question. I think every company really has. Um, and there's no cookie cutter answer to it. Uh, that, that's the first thing that I can say here. Uh, it, it's something where it is going to require time. Uh, there are going to be uh, costly learning curves if you're doing it all yourself. Um, you know, especially if you're using a marketplace that just lists all the manufacturers. 
clear example is Alibaba, the one that everyone tends to yeah. go to. Um, it's thoroughly vetting them. It's not just relying on accolades. So for example, relying on, okay, this is a gold supplier. I should trust them with all my money. It's, hey, can I see some references? It's how much information uh, are, are they actually receiving and able to regurgitate back to me? Um, are they saying yes to everything and then they're increasing the price down the road? Or are they saying yes and immediately telling you, yes, we can do this, but it'll cost 10 cents more. Mm -hmm. Or um, are they dragging you out? Are they just saying, maybe we could do this, maybe we can't. An experienced factory, if you're truly talking to a manufacturer, they'll tell you very clearly, yes, we can do that. No, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. The last thing that you want is someone to keep dragging you on. Uh, maybe we could do that. We'll try this out. We'll try that out. More than likely a trade agent um, in those aspects, and they need to check back with the factories. Mm -hmm. um, so doing, uh, you know, taking the time to actually research who your supplier is going to be, that's, that's the number one way. Uh, and then building that relationship. So not focusing on the transaction, not focusing on, okay, this is going to be $2. And if they tell you $2, oh, okay, maybe I can get it for $1.95 now. Uh, or, oh, maybe I can get it for $1.80 and it'll be better margins for me. Yeah. Uh, it's not focusing on that transaction uh, and realizing that this is not a B2C model. This is mm -hmm. all B2B. Right. So in a B2C model, the customer is always right. That is the saying, right? That's, that's Amazon's uh, mantra, I guess. Uh, someone returns something. Okay. Here's your refund. Uh, that's a very, it's it sort of uh, structured us in this way. Uh, but when you're doing that with factories, biggest turnoff for them is for you to say, I want a refund for this, or you did this wrong. So you're going to be penalized because they're not going to be able to do that uh, uh, on the opposite way. Oh, you haven't paid me uh, on time. So we're going to penalize you by doing this. They're not going to want to do that because that's not building the relationship, yeah. mm -hmm. right? That that's damaging it in every way. Uh, also, if you approach them with a questionnaire of, of a thousand questions of, uh, Hey, you know, do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have this? a true factory is not going to take the time to answer that unless you're an established business. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, uh, what Amazon has really brought to light uh, in China is that uh, apparently there's a million successful businesses uh, that say, I want the best product at the best price. Uh, and I promise I'm going to double or triple my order next time They hear it every time. Yeah. Right. So you have to be able to differentiate yourself and you differentiate yourself by being prepared by being professional, by developing that relationship and not just taking, 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 you have to give sometimes and you have to, you know, work through problems, yeah. not just, you know, point the finger and blame. Just the business, business development inside the it your is. way working inside, not only with a uh, Amazon, uh, um, like a group of people, yeah, that will just buy your products or purchase your products. But also you should do the same inside the factory, yeah, because it will be one of the ways uh, how you could show uh, your real uh, idea that you would like to implement this next or in five years. So yeah, that, that is a, I guess, one of the really cool recommendations, you know, that Amazon sellers could be focusing on. Okay, yeah. and uh, let, let's go deeper. I know that uh, most of the factories, they really do not like focusing on the first uh, purchase that you would like to have. They will provide you with maybe some discounts, some opportunities that you could use, but they will be interested in the next, yeah? what, you, what you would like to offer then, like in one month, two months or three, how to work with that, how to build, build a long-term relationship here. So for starters, again, breaking out of that B2C model and uh, trying to relate to them, trying to understand their perspectives. Uh, and, and I think one of the, the best solutions truly is uh, to find small problems and find ways to work through them with that factory. So again, not, not pointing the blame, uh, not saying, oh, you didn't make the sample right. Now you have to ship me a free sample. It's, uh, hey, you know, I understand this happens. How, what can we do to correct it? The factories will, will look at that as, okay, this guy is serious. They're, they're actually going to place the second order. They're going to stay with us. They understand that we made a mistake, but we're working to fix it. Um, the last thing that they want to hear is you did something wrong. Now you fix it. Uh, it's how can we fix it? And that's how they look at the second orders. Um, so being honest with them is just as important. It's telling them, Hey, look, you know, I, I'm really going to place just 500 units this time. I accept that you're giving me a higher price because you have to cover your margins. I just, I understand that, 
But on the second one, what can we do to, uh, you know, get that price down to what I need? Again, not what I wish for, but what I need. I need this to be $2, but you're giving me $2.50 right now. How many more do I have to order? Uh, and they look at that as, okay, again, this guy's serious. They're, they're, they're talking long-term. We're talking about pricing. We're talking about quantities. Uh, it's, it's moving the conversation forward uh, instead of, just taking, 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 I need this to be $2. Otherwise I'm not going to accept it. Uh, it. It's just no way to start a relationship. Got it. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, I would, I would like really to hear the uh, experience that uh, your users and clients have yeah, inside the Novaland. Could you please tell us more about, I know that you help on each of these way uh, to make it correctly to you help and to you ed- educate your clients in this way and i know it's like one of the main gaps that we have yeah regarding to the uh the all things that you have mentioned uh, above so uh let's speak about more about that more yeah yeah so uh, it's it's an end-to-end experience you know we try to do cover everything from the factory to door so whether that's to a amazon warehouse or we also handle fulfillment so it could be direct to consumer um but it is cutting out a lot of this uh this learning curve that every company every person sort of has to overcome with each factory uh, and we do that by having an experienced team every step of the way so we have Uh, your US-based account manager. Of course, they can provide you with the amazing service that we're so used to here in the US, right? Uh, everyone's looking for that uh, you know, friendly conversation, the, the yeses, the noes, the thorough explanations. Uh, so we have a US-based account manager. We have uh, overseas, we have two offices, one in Shenzhen, one in Hangzhou, and they handle primarily the product development. So we have a product specialist uh, and they double as a factory specialist. They know what factories like to hear. They know how to make them excited about projects. Um, They understand the details of your product itself. They understand who that's being sold to. Um, And in turn, they're able to really uh, engage with the factories and communicate with them, uh, first of all, in their same language, So they're most comfortable with it. Uh, Secondly, through the mediums that they're most comfortable with. So it could be WeChat, could be a phone call, uh, could be going in person and and talking to the factory owners. Um, Next is also talking to those factory management rather than just a trade agent that represents the factory, uh, which is very common. A lot of times you'll talk to a trade agent, you'll say, are you a manufacturer? They'll say, oh yes, you know, I'm a representative of the manufacturer or we're in a manufacturing cooperative, something of that nature. Uh, it, it's very common here on Alibaba. Um, but when they're working with management, you also get that next level of service because they're able to say, yes, we could do that immediately because they understand the manufacturing process mm-hmm. behind it. Yeah. And they understand the pricing and the margins that they have to get. Um, We also work with them uh, to to get better pricing because we have the buying power. So let's say you're, you know, you're trying to source this mug. That's just what you're trying to get. You're trying to get it from a factory for 500 units. Uh, Well, that factory is going to see that as one client doing one order. Whereas we're developing a relationship with the factory to where we can have 10 companies that are looking for similar mugs, bring them 10 times the business uh, and We develop that relationship with our customers to make sure that we understand the products. We Mm -hmm. understand the project as a whole, uh, and we can effectively translate that to the factory, uh, sort of cutting out a lot of the BS or the the drama in between it, right? Uh, So we we handle all these different aspects for the sourcing side, but then it also comes down to, uh, you know, keeping up with production. It's, It's keeping up with the samples and... Every time that uh, someone orders a sample with us, we'll inspect it, we'll provide them with a report, we'll let them know, hey, these are our honest thoughts on it, and then we'll ship it out. Uh, Of course, if we catch any discrepancies, we can catch it while it's still in China, uh, rather than uh, it being shipped out, spending $80 to $100 on shipping right now at least, um, and then finding out you don't like it. Uh, And and then it's it's, working at the factory to to further develop it, to find... uh, what improvements need to be made uh, on that product or what sort of quantities need to be uh, purchased uh, to actually get the right pricing. And um, aside from the samples, uh, production management, uh, another thing that we definitely oversee. So we provide all of our users constant updates of what's going on in their production. Um, One thing to realize is that when a factory quotes you a lead time of let's say, you know, 50 or 60 days, Mm -hmm. uh, it's not because it takes 60 days to make this mug. Uh, It's because there's 
20 companies in front of you that have larger orders uh, and really just takes five, six days to make it. Um, so it's constantly engaging with them mm -hmm. and uh, sort of continuing to build that relationship. That's one part that we really are able to provide and we're able to provide it on both sides, on the factory side to have them have a better experience and on our customer side to make sure that their projects are streamlined. Um, I really like your idea that you have the tracking, like the live tracking on all these actions and just main understanding when and what processes do you have like now when you start working on that. And th that is really cool, I guess, you know, because uh, a lot of Amazon sellers, they do all these things by their, by, like, uh, on their sites, yeah? And it's not so cool when you uh, do not understand what, do you, wh what to expect, yeah? What, what you should do next and uh, how to work with it, yeah? And uh, th that is really great that you share this experience to the most of the Amazon sellers on the beginning. And uh, I know that it's also important for a, not all, like not a new Amazon sellers. For example, the sellers that looking forward to get a new and find a new factory or supplier for their products, you also could, could get a chance to provide them with a hand of support. And uh, that is really amazing. Um, great. Uh, I would be glad to know like one of the last questions for today uh, regarding the your three main recommendations for Amazon sellers uh, for 2021. What do you think will be and should be the main focus for them? Uh, so going back to the beginning of our conversation, preparedness is number one. Uh, I, I think that is, uh, and I could share an RFQ guideline with you as well, actually, that, that could help all of your listeners and followers yeah. uh, structure their, their requests for quotes, and, and that way they can shoot those out to, to manufacturers. Uh, so preparedness is number one, and setting the right expectations. Uh, that, that's part of the preparedness, so realizing that there are tooling costs, things like that, uh, is important to understand. Uh, the, the, the second is to become better educated in supply chain. Uh, because it's not as simple as just purchasing a product from a factory overseas. Uh, you have to understand, again, you know, going back to preparedness, you also have to understand the export, the import process of it, uh, the storage, the warehousing, uh, fulfillment, things of that nature. Um, so that's number two. Uh, and the third, I, th I think it's something that uh, COVID has really uh, brought back to life for us. And, and that is... Um, realizing that developing the relationship is very, very, very important and more important uh, than just completing a transaction or successfully negotiating something. Mm -hmm. um, so building the relationship, uh, being prepared, setting the right expectations, uh, th those are just a few of uh, uh, key tips or key takeaways to go into 2021 uh, and do it successfully. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, friends. Uh, thank you for all this insight that you have shared with us. And I'm really glad that uh, we have a such a cool guest in the case of this topic as a supply chain. And uh, if we will have any additional questions, what is the best way to communicate with you and uh, just uh, ask you about that? Yeah, uh, definitely. They can add me on LinkedIn. Uh, just search Francois Jaffers. That should come up. Uh, or they can shoot us a message on Facebook. So they just search Noviland Inc. I think it's facebook.com slash Noviland Inc. Shoot us a message there. We're very responsive. Um, if if neither of those are, are you know, doable, you can shoot us an email. Uh, just inquiries at Noviland.com. Uh, and we'll try to get back to you within 24 hours uh, for any sourcing or supply chain related question. Great, perfect. I will uh, we will add all this information below, below inside our description. And once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Vitaly. Have a great night. Have a good day too. Bye. And that is all for today's Dr. Amazon episode. Don't miss our future arrivals with a new hot topics. Press the like, leave us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. We will come back to you shortly.